I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for that very kind introduction. Um, and I just want to start by saying I am so proud to be a midwife. I really am. And it's so lovely to be able to talk to student midwives. Um, as Nicole mentioned in the introduction, I, uh, I, I love developing midwives. I love seeing new midwives growing into the midwives that you are meant to be. And so it's an absolute pleasure to come and speak to you this morning on behalf of Professor Jacqueline Dunkley-Bent, who's our Chief Midwifery Officer. She also loves coming to these events and speaking to students. So um, I'm quite pleased that I get to do it today because she's actually on annual leave. So I am hugely proud to be a midwife. And I thought I'd start by telling you a little bit about my midwifery journey. It's quite nice for you to know you're launching into your midwifery journeys. And I think it's quite nice for you to see, well, how do people get to where they want to be or where, they're, where they get to in life? So I qualified as a nurse to start with. Um, and then as a midwife five years later, I trained at the British Hospital for Mothers and Babies in, in Woolwich, South East London. This was back in the day pre-degree program. <laughs> so it shows how old I am. Um, and um, this, this, you can see the, the, the picture of the, of the hospital that I trained at there in Woolwich. Uh, it was very old. They used to call them in lying, lying in hospitals. And it was just for um, maternity, that was it. And the School of Midwifery was on the side of the hospital, which was fantastic. So there wasn't any going to university. It was all within the one site. And so you'd, you'd kind of, you'd be, you might be on shift as a student, and then you'd go into, you'd move across, walk across, get changed, walk across into the, the school. And it was very much all part of one building. Um, and I was trained, I was very fortunate to be trained by the Nursing Sisters of St. John the Divine, who are the direct descendants of the Call the Midwife um, sisters. So you can see, from you'll probably recognize the uniforms. And in fact, when Call the Midwife was being made, um, they actually used the very same costumes. They went to visit the Nursing Sisters of St. John the Divine, the, this little group in the middle who, who are now the, the final, final descendants of that, um, of that organization, of that community, um, and they, they used their uniforms to copy. Um, you can actually see the crosses are exactly the same, so they, they mirrored it exactly the same. And I still see, so Sister Christine in the middle picture, and I, I promise to always, uh, it's her legacy, the fact that I'm, she, she loves the fact that I'm speaking to all of you. She is amazed that I get to speak to all of you. She trained me in the blue jumper. She was amazing. And everything that you see on the program that the nursing sisters bring across, or the midwifery sisters, they, they put across, that's exactly how it was. I was very, very honored to be trained by them. I worked in the community. I loved home births. I had two home births myself when I had my own children. Uh, I went into managing birth centers. I like intrapartum care, um, but I prefer the low risk to the high risk. You will find your place, you know, where you're comfortable, where you like working. Um, and then I went into a regulatory role um, prior to your training beginning, we had something called statutory supervision of midwifery. In your learning, you may have learned about it because it was around up until 2017. Um, and I worked in a role, uh, in a senior role as LSA midwifery officer um, for a while, covering London and also working across the UK in that role. And then I worked regionally as the maternity lead for London before I came into this role. So it's been a little bit kind of, um, it's been an interesting journey for me and I like to share it because actually it's not the classic route of, you know, going into management, becoming a head of midwifery or going into clinical practice and becoming a consultant midwife. So I share it because you're stepping into a profession where there are many opportunities for you and never forget that. Um, this is important to me. I love this quote. In all cultures, the midwife's place is on the threshold of life, where intense human emotions, fear, hope, longing, triumph, and incredible physical power enable a human being to emerge. I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? Do you know where I found that quote? When I was looking in my old, and they're very old now, notes from when I trained, I had been, we'd been, sh uh, Sister Christine, who was in the previous, she shared that quote with us, and I'd cut it out and stuck it at the very front 
of my uh, portfolio of my thing. And I absolutely think that that is something that you can stand by as a student midwife going to be qualifying at some point. Um, you know, stand by that. Hope, longing, and triumph. Sadness at times. Ultimately, incredible physical power, enabling a new human being to emerge. Incredible. But let's talk about your context as student midwives. So you have been going through a really, really unique period of time as you've trained as students. You know, we've had the global pandemic, which has impacted on your training experience, I am sure. You know, there's been, that has involved sickness, death, fear in the community, fear amongst our birthing population, our women that we care for. Do I go into hospital, don't I? Um, suspension of services, visiting restrictions, headlines, news, you know, the newspaper headlines, um, suspension of reporting through our governance routes up to national, um, and all sorts of pressures. Uh, and, and we've had inquiries, and we've got a, a public inquiry that has has just kicked off now into how um, government handled the pandemic at the moment. We are, it's focusing on the NHS. So we've got an inquiry going on at the moment. We've also had you know, global issues as well, other than the pandemic, the Afghanistan resettlement. We've had the Ukraine war, inflation, fuel crisis. So I'm not kidding. One of the things that Jackie, the chief military officer, was phoned up about when, um, when we were in the middle of the refugee crisis and the resettlement was, we've got a woman on an RAF plane, a, a whole cohort of people coming over to the UK, she's in labor, what do we do? Now, <laughs> now that's, that's a challenge, isn't it, for a chief midwifery officer <laughs> to be able to guide, obviously she was able to, to give the, the support she needed to, but those are the kind of challenges you get when you're in a, a, a national p position. And of course what that means is that you come away from that call and you th think to yourself, right, how can we prevent that from happening? What do we need to put in place to safeguard these women? So at this national level, those are the kind of things you have to think about. You have to be politically astute. And of course, all the issue about vaccine hesitancy this year has been the most challenging winter I think the NHS has ever, is ever experiencing. And we've got strike action on top of that. So this morning, a call that I was on was talking about today's strike action, ambulance strike action. Um, what impact will that have on home births? So it's those kind of things that in, at, at the national level that you're having to... to, to, to influence and to get involved in and to make sure that the safe care of women and babies are our priority. And of course, wouldn't be right to, to not uh, point to the recent reports, the national reports that we've had. We've had Ockenden Interim, we've had Ockenden Final, and we've had Reading the Signals, uh, the report about East Kent Maternity Service. I'm sure that all of you as students are aware of those reports, um, and I would absolutely suggest that you uh, make sure that you've looked at them and you've thought about whether any of those themes or trends that you've read about in those reports could be... Um, could be something that you see in your own service, um, but also what is a good practice you see in your own service in relation to those themes and trends. So what we, what we know for sure, for student midwives about to qualify, for midwives everywhere, regardless of what level of your career you're at, is that a compassionate culture is key. So we are in these days seeing more midwives leaving the profession than we've ever seen before. And why is that? Why is that happening? There is an element of um, look at what we've had to face recently. We'll look at the conditions we've had to work in. Reduced levels of staff due to uh, sickness related to flu, to COVID. Uh, reduced reduced um, uh, financial resource to be able to uh, increase the work that we're doing and, and make sure that we are resourcing our services in the right way. Um, and ultimately, though, what we want to provide, what we want to see in our maternity services is a compassionate culture. And it's really important to note that all these three areas are important when it comes to this culture. What do you see? 
It's a question I pose to all the student midwives, wherever you are, whether you're in this room or whether you're uh, watching this online. What do you see in your services in relation to how people behave, um, how systems work, what are the processes, what are the policies? Do they work in a compassionate way with the workforce? What do you hear people saying about your ideals, your goals, your values, and, your aspir and their aspir your aspirations as a service? And what do you see people that believe in? What are the underlying assumptions? What does the system work from? What are the underlying assumptions that you see in your systems? And of course, um, it's really important for us all to be aware that organizational culture is shaped by the nature of its leaderships and that it is the behaviors of leaders top to bottom, end to end, individually and collectively, that powerfully de determines whether care quality is the priority. And I would again want to challenge all student midwives and say, you know, you are in, many of you will be stepping into leading things. You may have led subgroups of student midwives. You may be leading a um, shared decision-making group of students. You may already be leading. Um, and, and it's important that you mirror these, this compassionate way of, of um, role modeling the culture that you need to see, that you want to see. So this is relevant. Don't think for one minute it's just relevant to leaders who are, you know, you might see at, at the top of the hierarchy. No, 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 no. It's relevant to all of us. We all need to be doing this um, for our colleagues and, um, and fellow students and midwives. So addressing workforce challenges, just briefly just going into what we have done from a national level to address some of the challenges that we face. Um, we have seen more for increased funding coming into the system to increase the numbers of midwives and obstetricians. Um, and we are really focusing on international recruitment. Our colleagues from the NMC are really helping, who you'll hear from later, are really helping us to get that right. Um, we've got a retention work stream who are looking at standardizing the preceptorship program, for example, which will really support newly qualified midwives as they move into a qualified role because we're looking to reduce the variation across England and make sure that all of you get access to a really sound um, preceptorship program which is based on the NMC's preceptorship principles. And we're working with uh, a a vast range of partners to increase the morale, to really focus on health and well-being of our midwifery um, population of midwives and our multidisciplinary team or, uh, across. Um, and we work with our midwifery ambassadors that we've got placed up and down the country and our professional midwifery advocates. If you don't know if there are any midwifery ambassadors or professional midwifery advocates in your service, there's some, something else that you can do. Go and find out. Find out where they are, who they are, and what can they do to support you when you become qualified as a midwife. So we've made sure also that there are band seven retention roles, support roles, uh, within your services, so that again, there can be some focused attention to make sure, making sure we retain our midwives in, in their roles. And it's not just about retaining them, it's about helping them to thrive. That's what we really want. We want our midwifery professionals, we want you to thrive in practice. Um, and those band seven retention leads will really support that. Um, we're also looking at how do we maximize um, the nursing population that work in maternity services? How do we acknowledge what they bring to our maternity services? And how do we encourage nurses to apply to do the shortened program um, of midwifery training? Um, and, and that's an area, again, that we're excited to see the amount of interest from some of our nurses to do the shortened program. We're also supporting our maternity support workers. I'm sure all of you have got experience of working with maternity support workers, such a valuable part of our workforce in making sure that we can align our MSWs alongside the Health Education England um, uh, framework for MSWs. And we've trained more professional midwifery advocates, that's the PMAs I mentioned before, uh, and we're increasing that number every year, and so that we can um, make sure there is capacity in each maternity services for restorative clinical supervision, which the PMAs can provide for all of you as student midwives and for midwives in, in your services. 
<laughs> it's important for you to know that the, head, uh, that the headlines are that outcomes are improving. One of the big key ambitions for us nationally is to halve the stillbirth rate. Um, and, and outcomes are improving. It's taking time, but they are getting there. And we have recently had seen a slight flicker upwards um, following the pandemic and the impact of the pandemic on our maternity uh, population of women and babies. Um, but on the whole, despite that, we are going in the right direction, in the right trajectory. However, and I don't know where all of you are based or what your level of diversity might be in your population, but it's important to notice that the inequalities are significant still. So we still know that if you are black Caribbean, you're four times more likely to die. And there is also uh, an impact on our Asian Pakistani communities um, with, with stillbirth rates. So it's really, really important that as a national team, we focus on that. And we have, um, we've got all sorts of pieces of work going on that is looking to be proportionate at making sure we apply our resources um, to those, those communities and those vulnerable um, groups. So what are we doing about supporting our newly qualified midwives? Um, this is so important to us because we want to, you, you are, all of you are the future of our profession and, and I'm excited to be sit, standing here in front of you all and speaking to many of you online. So um, I've already mentioned uh, all of these actually, but they are specific interventions that will support you. So pastoral support with a retention lead in every maternity service in England. So this is to provide supernumerary support to newly qualified midwives, to our internationally recruited midwives, um, and also to provide psychological support to, to you as you qualify and you move into um, a very different role. I'm sure you've talked to other colleagues, the different, what it, how it feels, and we're probably hearing this morning or through the day, how it feels from being a qualified uh, a student midwife into qualified. It's a very different role, and you do need support, and you'll be grateful for the support. The PMAs, the increase of the PMAs, I've already mentioned, and that, again, will be a hugely supportive step, um, I hope, and uh, I'm sure uh, that will be the case for you and your services. And the point about standardising a preceptorship framework across England is really important so that every midwife, every newly qualified midwife has equal access to the high quality um, standard of preceptorship framework um, across England. So that's really important for us. I'm coming to the end, you'll be glad to hear. <laughs> um, I really want to, um, to implore all of you to be the midwife you're meant to be. And part of that is about really understanding your purpose as a student midwife. So really understanding where do you, what are the areas you lean into? You know, when you go through your training, which are the areas that really make your soul sing? You know? What are the areas that you feel, I want to know more about that. For some people, it might be research. It may well be research. You know, you may be fascinated by what you see in the maternal medicine clinic, for example. You may want to go into research. For some people, it may be the newborn. It may be about, oh, I'd really like to understand more about, I want to really um, understand more about the newborn and how I can support maybe transitional care if, if newborns require that extra support. You might want to go into more of that area. Or, of course, you may want to in, um, work closer with, from a birthing perspective, um, whether that's in the community or in an acute center site. Um, but I would just suggest really help yourselves to identify um, the midwife that you want to be and work with it and lean into it. Uh, right, this is top tips. And I've put a picture of Jackie because she would equally want to be um, sharing these top tips. Um, so, Always, as you qualify, stay close to your people, so your women that you're looking after, the families you're looking after, your colleagues. So um, in every role, listen to what they're saying. You know, that's a big thing that came out of the um, Reading the Signals report from East Kent. Listen to what the women are saying to you. Their intuition is incredible, um, and, and don't ever... 
um, uh, ignore or not pay attention to what the women are saying to you. Be ready to have courageous conversations. Now, this is difficult, I know, as a newly qualified midwife or as a student. You know, there may have been times as a student when you felt, I don't think I've, I don't feel comfortable about what I've just seen. You know, and having a courageous conversation is knowing who to go to, where you feel safe um, in that relationship, and talking to them. So don't build up worries or concerns when you're going through your training. Make sure you go and ask and you speak to somebody who you feel safe with and ask about this situation that you found yourself in. Courageous conversations are important um, and particularly now, they, they are now, they will be throughout your, com throughout your career. Psychological safety. So when I just talk about feeling safe in a relationship with someone, that is about feeling psychologically safe. Um, so it's, it's important that you are in tune with that. Do I actually feel safe to have that conversation or not? And if I don't, what am I going to do with that feeling? And I think that goes to further down the list. We talk about building allies. Know who you can go to when you have that uncomfortable feeling. Know who you can go and speak to and who you, who you can thrash things out with. That is vitally important. Make sure you have good allies around you. Always ask, always ask, play to your strengths. So again, that's about what, what midwife do I want to be? Play to your strengths and know what they are. <laughs> uh, keeping women and families at the centre of everything that you do. And I've put at the bottom here that just to let you know that we have a chief midwifery officer, student midwife um, advisory group. Uh, so if any of you are interested in joining our national advisory group as a student midwife, this is the flicker of those leadership <laughs> antennae. For those of you that you think, oh, that would be interesting, then please don't hesitate to uh, let me know. Just the thank you slide. So um, it's been an absolute pleasure to be with you all um, this morning. Thank you and good luck, best wishes in all that you do.